This video we're going to learn about reflection and plane mirrors. Now mirrors date back to the earliest of civilizations and ancient Egyptians used polished metal to reflect their images around 4000 BC. What we're going to learn in this video is how objects reflect in a mirror, the law of reflection, and then we're going to learn how to draw ray diagrams and how to describe an image that is created by a mirror. Now first, some objects are reflective, which means they are going to reflect the light that hits them. Some are gonna be transparent, which means they are going to uh, have light pass right through them, kind of like a window. And then some objects are opaque. Now most objects are gonna be some sort of combination of these things. When I say opaque, it means that the light is absorbed by the object. Now. As an example, as you're looking at your computer keyboard right now, what you're really seeing is the light that's coming from your lamp and bouncing off that computer keyboard and hitting your eye. If you were to turn the lights out in your room, you'd have no more light hitting your keyboard and so you can't see the keyboard anymore. Now your computer keyboard is going to absorb some of the light and it's going to reflect other lights. And that's why we get all these different colors. In a later video, we'll talk about what color really is. We're just gonna focus on reflective objects in this video. And there's two ways that light can reflect off an object. Now we like to think of light coming in as a line. We call this a ray and bouncing off in another straight line. And this is called the ray model of light. We have some objects that are nice and flat like this and then other objects that are gonna be all bumpy. Probably more objects look like this. This would be really represent a mirror right here. When objects are gonna hit the bumpy surfaces, we're gonna get light bouncing off at all different kinds of angles. And we call this diffuse reflection. We're not really gonna study this any further. We're just gonna recognize that it exists. And most of the time, this is the type of reflection we have bouncing off objects. On this side, we have specular reflection. Now this type of reflection only really works with nice flat mirrors, but this is the one that we're going to study because it makes more sense. This one says that as parallel rays come into a mirror, they're gonna bounce off parallel to each other because we have that nice flat surface. And this brings us to the law of reflection. This states that the angle of a reflected ray of light is equal to the angle of an incident ray of light. Reflected ray is the outgoing light and incident is the incoming ray of light. And in terms of the angles that they're forming, we'd say that the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. Basically, all we're saying is that light travels in a straight line. If we can think about it this way, if a hockey player were to pass the puck and hockey pucks have to travel in a straight line, it's going to hit the boards and bounce off the boards at the same angle it came in at. Now I can show you this if I draw a perpendicular line here with the boards and I have this puck come in at say a 45 degree angle. So we'll say that's 45 degrees and the puck's coming in at a straight line and it's gonna bounce off and leave at a another 45 degree angle. So it can't suddenly just change to a different angle, just like light can't change to a different angle after bouncing off a surface. This is what the equation looks like. We use the symbol theta to indicate angle. So we just say the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. So this brings us to a ray diagram. What a ray diagram does is it takes a cross section of a mirror this is a mirror, we could say that's the top view of the mirror, and it shows how the ray of light is gonna come in, hit the mirror, and then bounce off the mirror. So one thing we're gonna to add to our mirror is we're gonna put a perpendicular line right in the center here, and I'm just gonna make it a dashed line. And this perpendicular line we call the normal line. This normal line is gonna help us to analyze the angle of reflection and the angle of incidence. So let's draw in our incoming ray. This is the angle of, or array of incidence. And it's gonna hit our mirror, and then it's gonna bounce off at an equal angle. So we have our incident ray, that's the incoming ray, and the reflected ray, that's the outgoing ray. Here's where the angles are. They're going to be between the normal line and the two different rays. So here is our angle of incidence and here is our angle of reflection. One of the biggest mistakes I see students do is that they call this the angle of incidence. 
that is the angle between the incident ray and the mirror. And I agree that's going to make an angle, but it's not the angle of incidence because the angle of incidence is going to be between the normal line and the incoming ray. All right, let's go ahead and learn how to draw one of these ray diagrams with a situation. So in this situation, we have our plane mirror. It's just a flat mirror. Here's our object. A lot of times we just use an arrow to represent the object just to make things simple. And here is you looking at the mirror to see if you can see this image that's formed from the object. So there's three steps I use when drawing a ray diagram. The first step is to draw the image. And for a plane mirror, that is a flat mirror, it's pretty simple to draw the image. All we do is take a ruler and we just measure equal distance from the mirror. I don't know why my, my ruler's not the best, but we get equal distance and the image is going to be the same height, same distance away. Let's see how well I can draw this. There we go, perfect. There's the first step. The next thing we want to do is draw in those reflected rays. This is kind of working backwards, um, but I found that it's the easiest way to draw ray diagrams. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to match up my eye to the top of the image. I'm going to draw a line in to show the reflected ray, and then I'll do the same with the bottom of the image. So I'm going to draw two lines here. I'll start with the top, so I just match my ruler up, and I'm just going to draw this ray on the uh, left side of the mirror. And this is going to represent the light that's actually bouncing off of the mirror and hitting my eye. This is going to form the image within my eye. I'll do the same thing, and I'll match up my eye to the bottom of the image, and I'll draw in that nice straight line. And there are my two reflected lines. Now, some people, you'll see them, they'll match that up, and they might draw in this dash line just to kind of show you that it is connecting to the image there, but you really don't need to do that. All right, the next step is we're going to draw in the incident rays. And the incident rays are going to show where the light is coming from, how the light is bouncing off the object and hitting the mirror. So what we do is we take the ruler, and we're going to match up the object, top and bottom, we'll do the same thing, to the reflected ray. So you want to be really careful to pick the right one. So this top one, uh, top red line, is hitting the top of the image. So I'm going to draw in this line from the mirror where it connects there to the top of the object. And right, I just changed up the color so that we could see that. Here's the other one. It's going to connect to the bottom of our object. So it's going to connect, go from the mirror right to the bottom. So I'll draw that one in. And then I like to add a couple of arrows just to show which direction that they're traveling. So incident rays are always going to the mirror, and then reflected rays are always coming out of the mirror to the eye. And if I drew in the normal lines, normal lines would be perpendicular to the mirror's surface, and they would split that incident ray and reflected ray. We should see that these angles, there's our reflected angle, there's our incident angle, are going to be equal to each other in both of those cases. So that's drawing a ray diagram. The last thing we want to do is describe this image that's formed. And we like to describe the location, the orientation, the size, and the type of image, those four things. Uh, to remember that, you can use the acronym LOST. And we really want to describe any image that's produced from any mirror using this uh, acronym and these four things. So let's start with the location. Now normally, we could actually calculate how far the image is from the mirror. Uh, well, we're going to save the mirror equation for a later video. So in this case, we'll just describe it in terms of how it relates or compares to the object. So here's our image, here's our object. We can just say it's equal distance from the mirror as the object. And so next one is orientation. And orientation, it's either going to be upright or inverted. Upright means going the same way as the object, and inverted would just be flipped upside down, so it would be pointing downwards. In this case, it's going to be upright. And the next one is size. Normally, we'll, we would calculate this. We'd calculate exactly how big it is using the mirror equation. But again, we'll save that for a later video. With plane mirrors, it's pretty simple anyways, these flat mirrors. It's going to be the same size as the object. And then the last one is the type. There's two types of images that can form. We can have real or virtual images. 
Now this all depends on the mirror and where it is on which side of the mirror. So where the light actually is existing, that's over here on this side, you can see our incident and reflected rays. We call this the real side because that's where light really is. And then over on the other side, we call this the virtual side because light does not actually travel to that side of the mirror. So this uh, image right here is existing in a space that doesn't actually exist. So we would say it's a virtual image. Sometimes we might produce an image over here. We call that a real image. There'll be more on that later in another video, but for plain mirrors, these flat ones, we're always going to produce a virtual image. All right, and we have described that image, and that is reflection and how to draw ray diagrams.